that is for the community, just so I can share what I have as well. And by this, I'm trying to say I am more of a generalist than a specialist in the sense that um, I tend to like to try a lot of things. I tend to like to try multiple things and just see what I like, video editing, podcast editing. I also do podcast as well. But when I talk about design, I call some designer friends and just interview them to share their stories, their likes, and I just like to do my things the way I feel. And being a generalist doesn't uh, in any way relate to how effective my workflow uh, has been with other content that I do. So I'm, I'm glad. All right, let's go into today's topic. Today we'll be talking about the final day. Uh, we're, sorry, we're talking about discovering the mid ground between UI, science office design, graphic design, and design. That's basically what we're talking about today. And in as much as we, we more than likely would have known these terms, which is UI design, graphic design, motion design, I'd like to just give a brief definition, just a simple definition again of what these um, these terms are, and start by defining UI design, which is design interface design. It's, it involves the design of visual elements that users can interact with, right? Elements like the buttons, like the forms, um, menus. Basically, you're here, and the form you filled out that brought you to this particular section. That's that's that's. And that's a functional element that a UI designer would generally do. And they also, UI design, it, uh, it's, it also involves designing website pages, landing pages, and generally mobile applications. And for graphic design, it focuses majorly on designing visual appealing content with digital or printable assets that can help aid marketing structure. Uh, the poster that you saw for this particular event, that's, that's graphic design. That was designed to help aid, the, the basic purpose was to aid and market this uh, session to you. It, it told you about the session, the post that spoke to you about the session, it was visually designed, it was visually appealing, and it communicated the information to you, and that's how we're here. And the third is motion design. Motion design is basically when graphics is in motion, basically when design moves. So imagine that poster was moving. Imagine my head was bouncing or the text was flowing, which obviously would be video content or GIS or GIF, whichever way you pronounce it. So motion is basically then when graphics is in motion, when design moves. So it involves the use of animation to help enhance user experience. It also it's also is quite the most engaging way of storytelling. Motion graphics is quite the most engaging way of storytelling. It's one of the best ways to convey information because uh, with the rates of technology and the things we have currently, a lot of questions like video um, video content more compared to, compared to say, quote unquote rigid pictures. So these are basically to find uh, the definition rather for these three things. But then, what what then is the middle ground? Right? What then is the mid ground? Why do we? How do we? How do we draw the lines as to what is what and what is not? Why do we have to draw the line? Because the lines are getting blurred, right? Between UI designs, graphic designs, motion design, and today you will see say startups, especially startups, and this is not major issues. Well, especially startups would be like, well, we need a graphic designer who has background in um, motion graphics and probably can edit video. One that I saw recently was, I think, was a brand designer who could drive. Like, what in the world is that drive, really? So, what then is the mid ground? We have to draw the line to make, to look for the balance spot. Now, it's, it's like saying, it's like saying, what makes someone a senior designer? What makes someone a senior designer? How could you tell that that person is a senior designer? Because unlike, uh, unlike 
say the educational sector of now. If you were if you were secondary school, for instance, if you're in junior secondary school, you, know, you would be identified that you're a junior student by your outfit, right? For some say government secondary schools, for instance, the the junior students, as a JS1 to JS3, have they put on short uniforms, right? Short is knickers. Whereas senior students put on long trousers. So there's the clear distinction. You know who's a junior, you know who's a, who's who's the senior who, who's in senior sector in that in that context. So and I'm trying to explain what then is the mid ground by bringing this particular quote unquote face. What makes someone a senior designer? What makes someone a junior designer? How would we know? So uh, let me just throw a couple of things I have here. Now, is it the years of experience that makes someone a senior designer? Is it okay? Maybe this person has been designing for let's say five years. Or would, would that make them a senior designer? Or is it the number of quality or detailed projects that they've worked on? Uh, let's say this person has worked on six quality detailed projects. Well, and when you really see the designs, if you really see what they've worked on, you're really blown away like, wow, this is really appealing, this is beautiful. But then, best believe, there are some newbies, right, who are just starting out in design, they're fat learners. I, I, I like to tag them naturals. I've been privileged to um, tutor a couple of designers, and the rate at which people pick up things these days, it's mind-blowing. So there are some newbies who are really talented, they're naturals, they grasp, they, they, they grasp things really fast. And if you give them the time, say within the space of six months, it's not impossible. It can be difficult, but not impossible. Someone can actually create a visually appealing, like clean aesthetic design, six quality design, within the space of eight months, give or take. So would that make them a senior designer? Remember, they're just doing this for eight months. So is it the years of experience? Is it the number of quality detailed projects that you've worked on? Or the third point, which is the last I've seen, are you a senior designer by how much you aim, right? Say, you know, someone say, well, I aim X amount of money every month, which is biggest, or which is close to Y and Z. So, and there are senior designers who actually aim less, right? Because of economical status and the likes of that, different reasons. So what really makes one a senior designer? Now, all of these can actually make one a senior designer, and all of these can might not necessarily make one a senior designer. But then the line has to be drawn as to who is the senior designer, who is this junior designer. And while we're still on the topic, while we're still on the topic, obviously we're not talking about junior or senior designers in this particular uh, yeah, in special account, in this particular session. I'm just using this as a ground to say to give reasons as to why again we have to find the mid ground between UI design, graphic design, and motion design. Because and while we're still on the topic of junior and senior designer, um, the reason for me saying the line for junior and senior designer has to be drawn is definitely not for gatekeeping, not at all. Please, disclaimer, big disclaimer. Uh, the only reason, basically, two reasons I give why the necessity for drawing the line for senior and junior designers is for standardization purposes and collaboration purposes. Like design has standards, uh, uh, there are standards. In in, in design principles and design form. So let's know who's who and the likes of these people. I, I have designers that I look up to as well, whose works I admire and I study. Designers like Lenya, designers like Zeus, just to name a few. So for standardization, for standardization purposes and also for collaboration purposes. So that's basically why I like to do. So back to the main topic. What then is a mid? What then is the mid ground? Why do we have to find the mid ground? Because if I go to my, uh, let's say I go to After Effects and I, I, I moved uh, uh, this this cube box you're seeing, I move and I, I, I make it move from left to right, add a keyframe, make it move from left to right, right, easy, easy the keyframe, and, um, uh, change the velocity code, and just make it a little bit move motion-wise. Does that make me a motion designer? What then? Why then is the need to find the need now? And where then do they all intersect? UI design. Graphic design, motion design, where then do they all intersect? And I'm going to tell us straight out of the box. You need to straight out, there's no hidden treasure. The mid ground actually between UI design, graphic design, and motion design is where they overlap. 
is where they coexist in harmony to create this cohesive user experience that is visually appealing and functional to the ideal users. That's the mid ground. The mid ground is where they all overlap, where graphic design, UI design, and motion design, all three in one space coexist in harmony and they create this cohesive user experience that is visually appealing and quite functional to the ID users. That's the mid ground. But then, this would be nearly impossible to achieve without two factors. And this is where they all, this is how they can all coexist. The mid ground is the fact that we know that these are distinct uh, creative roles. A UI designer is not necessarily a graphic designer. A graphic designer is also not necessarily a motion designer. And let me also say something based off of um, our, our cultural society, especially West Africa and Africa in the general sense, right? Uh, it's a way whereby we, because of the economy and other contributing factors, it is, it is difficult, it's not impossible, but it's difficult for a designer to specialize in one particular field. Why? Because it seems as though it would be more, you would, you're, you're more likely to get a job if you're a generalist than you being a specialist. A generalist in the sense of, are you a UI designer? Well, yes, I am. I can also do motion works. I'm also a video content creator. I'm also a video editor. Okay, and now you look more, you, you appear rather, you appear more um, employable, more valuable to a particular company rather than saying, all I do is UI design. And the fact is, you may actually be excellently well at what you're doing. Now, if you really want to be a specialist, that's fine. If you really want to be a generalist, that's fine. Honestly, whichever, it, that's fine. I'm not saying one can get a job either way or one can, you know, get a job both ways. But with geographical location and where we currently are, the economical status of West Africa, and not just West Africa, but Africa as a, as a whole, um, was still was still fast rising. Tech is still fast rising. So the mid ground is the mid ground between UI design, graphic design, and motion design is where they all overlap, where they coexist in harmony to create this cohesive user experience that is visually appealing and functional to the ID users. But now this mid ground would be nearly impossible without two factors, and the two factors what we're going to be really talking about in details. What are those two factors that would make this mid ground possible? What are those two factors that would make UI design, graphic design, and motion design coexist in harmony, right? What are those two factors that would make these three elements coexist in a very unique, cohesive way, whereby user experience is even the more visually appealing and functional than it has ever been. Two factors, just two factors. In fact, these two factors are like the catalysts that would be responsible for this mid-ground to be achieved. And here's the first of the two factors, design thinking. Design thinking is the first of the two factors that would make these three coexist. What is design thinking? I like this particular definition because it's quite simple. If Few words, that's what I mean. Design thinking is a human centered approach toolbox that helps you solve problems creatively. Design thinking. The two factors that would make UI design, graphic design, and motion design coexist beautifully that helps and makes uh, user experience more appalling and applauding. Two factors. Number one is one of those factors is design thinking. You know, let's let's brainstorm our mind. Let's, let's go back to let's go back to ten years from now. Ten years from now, if you if you ever used uh, let's say if you ever went to the cafe by time, remember those old times where you be good. I don't I don't really. Know. I mean, obviously, 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 almost everybody, almost everybody should have should have got go to the cafe by time. I think there in my area then 
think 30 meters for about 25 million or so. I can't remember the exact numbers, but that good. You buy time. And basically, either me, I was this Marvel comic, uh, Marvel or DC guy. So when I buy the time, when I buy time, then I didn't even have a phone. So open your Facebook accounts, the account that you're almost opening a new one almost every two, two weeks because you can't remember the password to the previous one. And you just send hi, hello to your school friend, your classmate. You go to school the next day and say, ah, I sent you a message on, on Facebook, man. You didn't reply me. So, okay, don't worry, I reply you. The friend goes by, buys his own time, goes to the cafe, like, hello, how are you? you go. How are you? How was the day? You go back the next day, you buy time, check, just to reply. The friend you are still seeing at school. You see, and let's go back a little bit more of that. So, of, let's, let's go back in time a little bit more. Five to sorry, 15 to 20 years ago or so, if you click a landing page, it's just flat. If you click the page, maybe you go to, say, let me use one particular website, myraland.com, this a uh, Nigerian sort of Twitter thing. Myraland.com, flat. It's just text boxes, right? User interface design, that's it. But it seems like there's no life. It feels like, it's not moving. There's no movement. It's no motion. It's just flat. Design thinking. Someone sat down, thought about it. I know this is user interface design. Yeah, and there's a couple of posters there. Maybe someone is advertising on Naira land or so. Buy a land at the Bedjuleki, 10 plot for 700 Naira, whatever, whichever. But it's not alive. And someone sat down to think about it why not when people log into a particular website there's this dancing ball welcoming them motion design thinking is the is one of the two catalysts that would help user interface design graphic design and motion design coexist in harmony to create visually appealing user experience for the ideal users Design thinking. It's a human-centered approach toolbox. And if you know, if you, you you if you know what toolbox are, I can show you one. It's it's a box that has a lot of parts. So it has a lot of things. If you open a toolbox, you find a screwdriver, you find a spanner, you find scissors. You know, you find different things. The toolbox because it solves many things. But if you see human-centered is highlighted in bold because that's the focus. The focus is. How can humans, the ideal users, get the best experience while enjoying these things? How can they? If you know when TikTok came out, maybe maybe this is me, right? Maybe it's just me because I didn't start using TikTok until this year. I had an account for a long time, but officially started using it this year because I started creating video from I started creating video from last year, December. Then I started officially using it this year. But before now, I never knew TikTok had sound design. For instance, now, if I open a video, my phone, you haven't seen the video, you don't know what I'm watching, but you hear the sound, ta -da, you know that Netflix, that's branded. But someone sat down to think about, yes, we have a logo. Now, Netflix logo is it's a logo mark, Netflix itself, the whole text, code, customly made for them, of course, from the Bibas and the Wave font. But then the letter M itself is still iconic. The rare is still there. But Netflix still feels like that's not enough. We need a sound design. We need something that stands out. What of someone who's blind? What about someone who's blind or can't see? They have to know that Netflix exists. I mean, we have to reach out every single person. So we need a sound design. So even if they can't see, at least they can hear that sound. When they hear, ta -da, you know, that's Netflix. Sorry, I'm not doing sound well. Please don't laugh. So now they come up with sound design. And for me, up to recently, I never knew TikTok had a sound that could identify them. I've always done their logo. I love it. It's, it's well designed. But then if you watch TikTok videos, especially videos that are downloaded from TikTok, at the last ending part of TikTok, you hear one sound. I've forgotten what it sounds like, right? But I'm sure if you use TikTok, you know what I'm talking about. Design thinking, it was about, design thinking is the catalyst that 
make people sit down the same. You can make design thinking can make every single creative field coexist in harmony. Think about the fields you would even think we might not necessarily need them now. Think about the unmatchable, unmatchable creative roles. Think about roles that you feel. I don't really think I would ever, not personal preference, I don't really think this creative role or this creative role would ever work together. Say for instance, um, I'm trying to think of all of them, I don't know. But let's just for example, for example, for example, say a banker, right? A banker is an accountant. Um, say they need a sound, a banker who, who is a, an employee, actually, not just like you own the bank, but an employee says, I need a sound that can let my boss know I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm at work. I mean, it's more like you don't really need that kind of branding. But then think about the unmatchable roles, the unmatchable roles you could think of. Design thinking can bring them together. That's what I'm trying to say. And design thinking, I guess, because it is human center. It's it is a human center. The goal is to see to it that truly all humans are united. Every every role comes together. Every role. It will be of no, it will be of no need to say. Uh, video videographers cannot work with sound designers. Obviously, we know they they work and they have. It's something we do. Uh, illustrators would work with story uh, story um, content writers because say you write a book, you write the content, you know, illustrator to draw your things for you. We know they can work. Illustrators can work with motion graphics designers, animators. We know they can work. So think about roles that they cannot necessarily come together. Design thinking can bring them together. It's the catalyst that brings the new ground. Aside from drawing the line, because now the line is really blurred. The line is really blurred in the sense that UI designers, and and sometimes when, uh, I've been, like I said, I've been privileged to um, mentor and I'm still training a couple of persons in the design space. And someone, some of them want to learn every single thing that I do. Everything, every single thing that I do, at least, at least almost all of them do not want to learn illustration because they feel they can't draw the last time. We're still trying to, we're still working on that. But everything, like teaching everything, but there was no particular purpose at that. But then, design thinking is human centered. It's an approach, it's, it's a toolbox that helps you solve problems creatively. And there are five steps to design thinking. Sometimes you see four, other times you see six, other times you see eight. Depends on who and how how well you want to, how large you want to uh, elongate it. But the first step to design thinking is empathy. Empathy. Empathy is when you understand the customers, understand the business. Empathy is when you know who you're building the product for. Empathy. Understand the speed that you're designing for. Understand their needs, understand your problems, understand them. Let me give you a general example. If you are in Nigeria, if you are you know, a Nigerian in Nigeria, you would understand that we have a lot of fintech companies, a lot. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to call names. So I don't want to make it like friendships, but we have a lot of fintech companies. And they they've tried to understand. And if they are Nigerians, right? If they have Nigerian in the key core team, you would I would want to believe that they have empathically studied the the final users who are using their product. And in our banking and finance space, we have we have at least at least two problems. Two problems, at least two. Number one bank charges. Why will I be debited 20 naira or even 5 naira if I send 1,000 naira to someone? And why will I also be debited in? Why will I be debited? Why will I get debit a lot when I'm the one who's with my own ATM card? And you charge me for card maintenance. I'm the one maintaining the card. I'm the one cleaning the card. Of course, we can try to understand the um, the tech technicality that the bank are doing, but then these bank charges are ridiculously high. 
I use a bank, the, the bank I bank with. Um, if I transfer so 1,000 there, I get a debit alert of, I think, 20 naira, but then I get another debit alert of one naira. Now, the 20 naira, they're telling me, will be debited for the 1,000 to transfer. Now, the one naira is the debit alert. They are telling me that they've debited me. So that's a major problem. But then we have a number of fintech companies who they've been able to solve that problem in the sense that use our platform, make your transfer, for free. We're not charging any bank checks for the transfer, which is good. They've been able to solve that problem. Empathy is when you know your customer. Okay, wise. Know your customer. Right. You know who you're designing these things for. And remember, we're talking about the two catalysts that can bring these three creative fields together. And design thinking is the big part of it. Design thinking is majorly about, in fact, design thinking is, before we move on, let me, let me emphasize something about design thinking. Aside the fact that I can, I love, I love to basically uh, make a joke that design thinking is when, it's, when it's when the brand wants to know how designers think. And if you if you allow me to just, aside from the five points we're going into today, right? Let's go into the nitty gritty of design thinking. I'm going to give you just two points, which are going to be number one, conceptualization, and number two, actualization. And let me explain what I just said. Conceptualization is when a brand wants to know how you think. Let me give you an example. Think about big brands, known brands. If you know, I think it's K O T O. That's that's it's one design brand. I don't know how they pronounce it. Maybe Koto or that. But recently, I mean not recently, but one of the design they just released was designed for coat. They were the one respect. They were the one who the commission to be designed both of them. That that's design kind of, and these guys have seen them. Another design agency is the future. Now, take for instance, why now, why will, should Netflix want to design, should Netflix rather want to have a brand reflection? Why would they carry their product and say, hey, give it to an outside designer, say, take, I want you to redesign Netflix for us. Now, Number one, Netflix obviously has designers, in-house designers, because go to their social media page, go to their website, these are proof that they have in-house designers. They have designers that are really creative. Why wouldn't you just leave your designers to make a rebrand for you if you want to do such? Now, as I before, it's not like the designers are not going to be right now. Well, these guys are way clean. They are, the aesthetic is aesthetic. Really. But they need fresh eyes. They need fresh design. And some design agencies have made name for themselves. Pexel is one of those design schools that has made name for herself in Nigeria. You can't mention design school in Nigeria without uh, having Pexels. And I'm not trying to give a shout out because I'm on their platform. In as much as it sounds like a cliche, but I'll be honest, it's, 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 it's nice. Stop it. All right, let's come back. So they want, they, they now, they, they need fresh parts. They want to see how you think. And, some designers have been able to show their conceptualization process. Example, the future. Go to the YouTube page, you would see they've literally broken down a lot of design topics, a lot from branding to brand strategies to design thinking to idealization to finalization to handling of projects. They've literally broken down a lot of things. They've been able to build in public. Now, brand knows that. I trust the future to handle my brand profession because they want to see how they think. They want to know how they think. Now, there are designers who, when it comes to conceptualization, they struggle. Conceptualization is how can you create the idea? How can you imagine it? If I give everyone on this call a task and I say, everybody, take 10 minutes, the same task, I want you to sketch out two logo designs for a brand company that produces ice cream. You're going to see unique design because each and every one of you see it. If you like, you're going to see beautiful 
unique design. Now, we know that there's a possibility that some would look like some, and I've explained one of those um, reasons before in one of my contemplation videos. I, I call it the gospel of design. Why design sometimes two different people who never have even met each other before, probably even different continents, design two different, do the same thing or have the same idea at, the, at almost the same time. I mean, look like they copied each other, but they didn't. Conceptualization is that process of bringing the idea into sketch, fleshing it out. That's conceptualization. In fact, conceptualization is 70% of the design work. Actualization is when you are actually doing the design, and which is the least, I mean, I'm not trying to belittle the um, efforts put into opening Adobe Illustrator and finally vectorizing that logo or going into Photoshop and finally finally designing that flyer. I'm not trying to um, belittle that process, but you see the concept <laughs> is that, that point, that one really holds a very high percentage because it's about now your brain. It's about now your thinking capacity, your creativity is coming to play here, even on the moment. And I'll be honest, yeah, there are designers who they are very good at actualizing, but they're not very good at conceptualizing. And it's not a bad thing. It's not, you just have to work on yourself, practice, uh, stay around creative minds and see how they do things and, and learn. It's not really a bad thing. It's okay to not know that. It's okay to not know both niche, but it's not okay to remain that way. Please, I, I, I hope you don't mix that up. It's, oh, I'm, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to encourage um, designers not being able to come up with ideas. It's okay to not be able to know it at first, but it's not okay to remain that way. You have to learn, you have to pick it up because it's part of the process. It's really part. That's why companies will pay billions of dollars to designers, brand entities to say, help me rebrand. It's not like we don't have designers in our, in our own firm. We do. But I love the way we've done this thing. I've seen the way we've been able to conceptualize other people design. And first point, you have to be honest with yourself. So okay, I really, I really don't know how to do it. And, and designers who can actually actualize design is when you give them rules, everything is already fleshed out. Everything is already fleshed out. They would come up with the best design you've ever seen. Because it's already fleshed out. All you have to do is open Photoshop, open Adobe Illustrator, open Figma, and start actualizing. You see, pick up your pencil, your iPad, or whatever to use. Sketch the user interface. Sketch the design first before you go up to Figma to finally create that app. That's the conceptualization process. That's the work. It takes work. I've seen a student cry. I've seen a student cry. I myself know when I used to cry because of nose and hand. This is with respect to illustration. Nose, hand, eyes. These things are key and crucial. So conceptualization is one part of design thinking and actualization is another part of design thinking because conceptualization, you have the sketch ready. You have the, you have the sketch fleshed out. Actualization, now you're thinking, okay, which color do I use? And this purple is not purple. And this yellow is not light. This yellow is orange. And this is where you start, this is where you start actualizing. So empathy, empathy. I haven't forgotten my train of thought. I was using Q-Tech and that's why I'm using all through this which will explain empathy. And I remember I said, the FinTech company I've studied and we have at least two problems in Nigeria faces. And number one, I said, is the debit alert. And FinTech company has been able to solve that. We have a lot of FinTech companies that to solve that. Whereby you make your transaction, you can do multiple transactions in a day and you don't get debit allowance if you use their platform. Empathy, know your customer. Know, know the users, know what they want. Know how to, how to reach out to them. Know the problems. The second phase of design thinking is define that the empathy, you've, you've known your customer, you know the problem, know the stress, go back to your own closet and define it. So take what you've learned from interviewing this design, oh, sorry, not designers, interviewing your customers, interviewing the users. Now you go back to the drawing board and you begin to detailedly analyze it. Okay, this is the problem. Right? Nigerians have a lot of uh, problems. Number one, uh, 
your fintech app, your mobile app, something that um, some generations cannot use. Especially, say, the baby boomer generation, 50s and above, it's sometimes quite complicated. Some of them don't remember their password. Uh, it's difficult. So, what can we do that at every single age group in Nigeria can use this app? I'm talking about fintech, you think the thing. Um, I think the best is just to do more you can dive. Uh, so this like sort of, I think that one is something that almost everybody can do. Because if we're going to go with only mobile apps now, only those with smartphones can access it. And so we're very, probably the very, 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 what if, if you look at statistics of where and smartphones, what if they're not the losing customer? And the last of that, we begin to define this interview session we've had with empathy. Empathy is understanding the emotion, you're connected. You want to really solve the problem, define it. Now, I gave the first problem. I gave at least, and I'm just, I'm just going to talk about at least two problems. The first one is the debit allocation, which a lot of fintech companies have been able to solve. The second is for the younger generation, which not just the younger generation, but majorly the younger generation. Because now, for most of designers who work in Nigeria, it's difficult to receive payment in foreign currency. That's the second problem. And we have a lot of fintech companies who couldn't stuff the problem in very long time. Not until recently. In fact, I'm, again, I don't want to call any fintech company, but you already know some fintech company that actually can solve this problem now, whereby you can now receive payments in any preferred foreign currency of yours. Right? Dollar, euro, pounds, you know, any currency of yours. This were the two, these are the, at least two major problems we're having in Nigeria. Number one, debit allocation, which almost every fintech company has solved. If you use any fintech app, at least the ones I've used, they don't charge for transaction. Second problem is now receiving money abroad from the abroad into my own abroad. Well, it's difficult because we can't. We can't. In fact, one platform we know that is general. I think I can get uh, I shouldn't make sure. But you know, you know one platform that is very general, but it is worldwide standard. In fact, if you if you've ever worked with an international brand of what you're client for, they would actually do you have a PayPal account? You know, that's that's one general one. Uh, do you have PayPal accounts? Because PayPal has actually been able to they, they've been doing this. But their paper is not available to folks in Nigeria. It's not available to us, at, at least the legal way, something like that. It's not available to us. So other fintech companies have tried, and you know some, I don't want to mention names, but it's not what it didn't work. It doesn't work, let's be honest, it doesn't work. So am I going to say that the problem now, if you really are going to be honest, most of the fintech company who which which we have, the main reason why we go get their USD card is not just to, I mean, I know I said two, but now let me add the third one, being able to pay for um, uh, transactions with foreign currency. So that's the last one, one problem as well. But aside paying for uh, current, uh, paying for like things like Netflix subscription or Hulu subscriptions, um, um, Apple Music subscription, which now it's, you know, recently you can now buy it better and you know, right? But then it seems to be safe. But that receiving dollar and foreign currency is a problem that we have too many fintech companies that have not solved that problem. But they are still coming out. Are we going to say their empathy stage was not the design thinking that came into that producing that product was not successful? Well, we can't really say that. But then it's looking like it. So defining that problem with had is the second stage of design thinking. The third stage of design thinking is ideating it. Now, ideating it is when you come up with potential ideas, come up with solution-based ideas, strategic solution-based ideas that can actually solve the problem that you've with empathy, the problems that you've you have with empathy find out, the problem that you have defined and giving clear detailed analysis as to this is how this thing is this is how this is what is suffering this is what is failing let me let's use this guy let us use this to solve the youth should be able to receive dollar successfully 
without stress. Without stress. I had I had an experience one time. Let me just keep this in. I had an experience one time whereby a, a friend of mine charged a dollar. And the brand declined, we were uh, accepted to pay. All right, that's fine. When it was time for payment, I said, you know what? The value of what we agreed in dollar, you have to send it to me in matter. Now you are stressing the you are stressing the you are stressing the client. You that charged in dollar before and you don't have the facility to receive dollar now. Who, who, who is who? You're stressing the client. So ideating is when you come up with these potential ideas to solve a problem. And this is this is your brainstorming state. This is where you sit down and think about it. Okay, let's fix this. And the fourth state is prototyping. Prototyping basically is when you make these ideas. <coughs> Excuse me. When you make this idea, then your idea is realistic. Something near to the finished product, but not necessarily the finished product because it's still it's still in the process. Prototyping. It's near to the finished product, but you have to give users something that they can work with. Right? Yes, you've sketched it out, you've thought about it, you've, you drew the say you want to rebrand one particular bank mobile app. Which I believe almost everybody might have one bank mobile app that we say this bank. Let us just help you design it. We have that, point. but then you've ideate, you've, 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 you've studied the customer. You know almost everybody is talking about this bank. If you go on Twitter, almost on every trending is somebody somewhere you know know someone somewhere by studying one bank that your app is not open. You know someone somewhere, you've seen someone somewhere. Before. So prototyping is when you now give them something. Give your users, right? Not just users, but um, user persona, right? When you just create a uh, fictional representation of your ideal customers. So, okay, you know what? I want you to really come on. Test this product. The prototyping is what we use. It's almost to nearness, it's almost, almost to finished product, right? Near to new scenario. This is where you actually design the design and the And the fifth and last part I'm talking about is the, design is the testing product. When you hand that product to someone, say, hey, take. I think you just not just test it, not just um, not just someone, your friend, your no user, um, user persona is when you pick fictional characters, fictional the fictional characters that are actually close to your ideal users, close to the ideal product, finally consuming this product that you actually set up. And design thinking is the first catalyst. Remember, I said two first catalyst that will actually make motion graphic design design interface design coexist in hammer because someone talked about it this web page is too rigid it's too rigid i know it's too rigid it's too rigid we had web one basically you could only go on the internet and read you couldn't add you couldn't contribute you could just go there and consume that's all. And we have currently we have Web2. Web2 is a platform whereby not just that I can now go and read, consume, I can actually contribute, I can write, I can add, I can leave a comment, I can share. Now we have Web3. It's not just that I can go and like, read, contribute, I can actually make money. I can actually get paid. So someone sat down to think about it. Web 2 is nice, yes, but let's upgrade it. And I want to use the opportunity to say this every single logo can be worked on. Every as perfect as it seems, it can be worked on. I've seen a couple of perfect logos that I personally can't perfect. Mike logo is one of those beautiful logos that fits on anybody. Even if Mike says food today, that logo can still because it's just check, literally authentic food. Check it. But then Give a design team my logo and watch them rebrand it in a way that you will actually see that. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the Mike logo was perfect, to which it was, it is. But every logo can be done. Everything because design thinking, let me see how I'm going to use uh, design thinking is on that niche. It's, it's, it's let us bring it to the dearest minimum, whereby whosoever. Whatsoever can do whatsoever 
whenever. Design can do it. It's when someone sit down, sit that alone, uh, it's fine. But it's too, and now, if you, if the first time you open my, you open that alarm before the website, I'm talking about the old one. But the first time you open that thing, that, sorry, excuse me, that website, and it wasn't confusing to you, ah, you're a genius. You're a genius. You really, you should be, you should be called the father of design or the mother of design. Because that thing was, is, and been, you know, until it's been developed, confusing to me because of the way it was. You see comments from last week, I don't even know. And there's a lot of information in that platform. But then design thinking, someone started to think about it. The website is fine, I know. But then let's have motion. Let's have something. But by, before you click a button, when you click the button which has been designed, then it have this animation in the round, so this stroke movement that goes right. You react to it, you know that, yes. So you feel it in your brain that your, your nervous system moves to your brain and tell you that something actually happened. So design thinking is the first catalyst that will actually help to draw the meat ground between UI design, graphic design, and natural design. And the second catalyst is UX research, user research. And basically, user research, user research focuses on understanding the user behavior, understanding the user needs, and also understanding the user motivation through observation and feedback by prioritizing the user. Remember, the user will always come top in priority because it's really about the users. You don't want to create assets and in, and yes, sometimes in companies we have OCDs, right? Or gas center designs. I uh, mean, way, way, way. it has to be visually appealing to the boss first, which is it's actually a good thing sometimes. But then the designers are like, I don't think that's what the customers want. After all, I want to design for the users. But the boss, I mm, like red. Mm, red. Red cannot go for a uh, sharp Netflix color red cannot work for baby products. Let's use let's use blue, light blue. Let's use light green. Let's use pastel colors. You say, no, 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 I want black for baby products. Black. Now we have this orgasm type design sometimes, we know also in that way. But then focus on understanding the user behavior. Focus on understanding the user behavior. Focus on understanding user participation by what by observing the feedback that the users are giving and prioritize the users. Now, just gonna briefly before I wrap up, I think I have about 10 more minutes or five minutes. Ten minutes yeah. Briefly before I wrap up. Now, user designers, right? Let me just talk a little bit about user designers. User designers are uh, User designers are not necessarily, by user designers, UX, UI designers, that's what I mean. User interface designers. User interface designers are not necessarily user experience designers. And both user experience and user interface designers are also not necessarily user researchers. Right? And these things are actually supposed to be three distinct different things. But then, um, mm -hmm. I mean, we do that for a second. And it's not just SACPA. Some people actually have passion for it. You even have passion for all three of them. So it's not just SACPA. But then um, we have with the in the in in the Western world, there are folks who all they do is user research. They don't even they don't even do the design work. Now, as a brand identity designer, there's also a different rule called brand strategist. Right. Brand strategies do not necessarily have to design. They don't necessarily have to design. It's a good thing if you know how to design. Of course, you know how to design. You really know how to push the pixels. But brand strategists are not necessarily the designers. They are the ones who just they con these are the consultants. These are the people who tell you how the brand should form. As tweeted before, I say one day brand strategists and brand designers will fight because I'm designing something and you are coming to tell me strategically this one will not work. Can you actually do the design? Of course, but then so user experience designers, UI designers, I'll use UI, UX, UXR, user research, user experience designer, just so we are. Also, I don't mix words up. User interface design, UI designers, these are people who design, 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 
design provide a value. User experience and understanding. They give feedback. They are the ones who, who bring, who, uh, who look out for how the product is being used and how well the user can use the product. Because we have product that actually can have good UI, bad UI. The user cannot now use it. Why? Because user designer, designer, too far. And the user experience researchers are those who will actually go out, find out what is what. How well are you using this product? What problems do you have using our product? These are the researchers. Now, it's a good thing if you can actually research as well as a user designer or as a user experience or UI UX designer. It's a good thing if you can research because value added skill these days, it seems, please, it seems as though you are of more value to a brand new company or client or startup if you know multiple uh, if you have multiple niche you know it seems as though you have more value to them. So that means it so user research user research is the second catalyst that will help because when researchers research and they see that this thing users are not liking how Naira land is put users are not really users cannot navigate this thing then design thinking come up so okay how can we solve the problem let's start with everything let's go and interview Let's go and ask questions. Let's define. Let's ideate. Let's put it out. Let's test it. Now let's launch it. It might be so. User researchers and user design, design thinking works on them. Design thinking is more about how well can you, how well can your brain do this thing? Do they work? Do they show us? Look, user researchers. I'm just going to name four things that user researchers focus on. Number one, they focus on understanding behavior, user behavior, set of folks, user needs, then. Also, motivation through observation and motivation through feedback, basically. And I think I'll stop here for now. And that's 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 all. Uh, if you have any question, let me let me my time's up. But thank you. That's that's it. So these are the two catalysts that helps aid the middle ground between UI graphics and motion design. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you so much, Goran. Thank you so much for this amazing presentation. I mean, you went really went in depth on this topic. Thank you so much. So, if you have questions, please kindly drop. Okay, I can see someone already asking a question. If you ask questions, please drop them um, in the um, message section or raise your hand and I'll call you to ask your question. But before then, please, can we turn on our videos so we can like take a screenshot um, for social media purposes, please? Please, guys, turn it, it just like, it, it just take like two seconds and we'll be done with that. So we'll move to the question and the segment, please. Let me go first by turning on my video. Okay, okay, I can see. Okay, Patrick, you said you don't have like that's fine. That's fine. Okay. 